In this video, you're going to be learning about different types of network cabling. Hi, my name is Kevin Wallace and welcome back to the channel. And this week's video is going to focus on different types of copper cabling. And these are topics you need to know for both the CompTIA Network Plus exam and the Cisco CCNA exam. Here are four main things you're going to be learning. Number one, you'll learn about different types of twisted pair cabling, like shielded twisted pair, unshielded twisted pair. We'll discuss plenum cabling, and you'll learn about when to use different types of coaxial cabling. We'll then discuss electromagnetic interference and how we can help protect ourselves against that by twisting pairs or by shielding cable. You'll learn about the property of impedance that we often talk about with coaxial cabling. And there's a new type of cabling that's found on the CompTIA Network Plus exam, and it's called called twin axial cable that can carry data at very high speeds and you might find that in a data center and then for your memorization I'll give you a table of twisted pair standards we'll talk about the maximum speeds for these standards and what their distance limitations are and if you find this video helpful please do me a huge favor and click like also subscribe so you don't miss any of our future content and turn on notifications so you'll be alerted as soon as we come out with next week's video. And if you are studying for a Cisco exam, one of the biggest questions I get is how do I get hands-on experience? Well, I recently wrote a book on that and I'm going to give it to you in PDF format. Just go to kwtrain.com slash four ways. Again, to get a completely free PDF of this book explaining four different ways to get hands-on experience for your Cisco studies, just go to kwtrain.com slash four ways. Now let's check out this week's video, which is taken from our Network Plus video training series covering different types of copper network cabling. In this video, let's talk about some of the different types of copper cabling we might find in a network. And we have two specific types we're going to focus on coaxial cable, and a twisted pair cable. First, let's focus on coaxial cable. If you look at the tip of that cable, you can see a wire coming out. Well, that little wire that's inside the cable, it's surrounded by insulation, so it's not touching that outer metal braiding that you see. And then you see the insulation around that braiding. But we have two conductors. We've got that inner wire and the braiding. And a reason it's designed like this is to help prevent EMI electromagnetic interference. That's what happens when one transmission gets carried over into another transmission. You might have experienced this on an old telephone line. You were talking on the phone, but you could faintly hear somebody else. And that was because your telephone cables and your neighbor's telephone cables, they were going back to the central office side by side. And the electromagnetic field created by their telephone wire was induced on your telephone wire. And you could hear them somewhat. We don't want that in the networking world. We don't want our wires to become an antenna where we could transmit and interfere with someone else, or we don't want to be an antenna and receive interference from someone else. So we want shielding. And the way this gives us shielding is by surrounding that inner conductor with the outer conductor. And that design, based on Maxwell's equations, which say that a radio wave cannot pass through a perfect conductor. But this design, even though that braiding is not a perfect conductor, it's really, really good. That's going to help prevent anything going through that braiding and getting to the inner conductor. And coaxial cables are measured by impedance. And the two main impedances we have are 75 ohm and 50 ohm. In your home, if you have cable television or cable modem, you're likely to have 75 ohm coaxial cable either RG59 or the newer and better RG6. I say RG6 is newer and better because it is less lossy. You can go for a longer distance with less loss. And in the early days of Ethernet networking, we used 50 ohm coaxial cables to carry packets around the network. RG58 was a thin coaxial cable, and that Ethernet technology was called 10 base 2 or thin net, and it ran at 10 megabits per second. RG8 slash U, that was a thicker coaxial cable, and that's what was used for 10 base 5 or thick net networks. And with the thin net networks, you had these little uh, twist on coaxial connectors where you could connect a uh, computer into the cable by tapping into the cable, or we actually had something called vampire taps, something that would penetrate that outer insulation and get into the inner conductor for the thick net. But we don't see coaxial cable used for networks much these days. And think about the name coaxial. We have two conductors, an outer conductor and an inner conductor, and they have the same center point or they have the same axis. That's why we call it coaxial. However, a more recent variant 
is twin axial cable. Here we have two interconductors, each on their own axis. And this type of cable has several different use cases, but primarily we use twin axial cable today for data centers. Because in data centers, we typically don't need really long runs. So if we need to interconnect a couple of components in a data center and we don't need to exceed seven meters, twin axial cable might be the solution for us. And it typically runs in a data center at either 40 gigabits per second or 100 gigabits per second. And again, that's with a seven meter limitation. But outside of our data center, we're typically going to see some sort of a twisted pair cabling used in our networks with distances less than 100 meters. And you might wonder how we're protecting ourselves from EMI if there's no shielding. Well, some twisted pair cable does have shielding when we get into higher speed transmissions, but we do have unshielded twisted pair cables or UTP. And the way that we prevent or reduce EMI with unshielded twisted pair is by twisting pairs of wires together. By twisting those wires, we have copper crossing over copper at a distance that's less than one fourth of the wavelength that's being transmitted down that cable, and that's gonna prevent it from becoming an antenna. So by tightly twisting the wires, that is gonna provide us with some EMI protection. However, in environments with a lot of interference or when we want to have higher speeds on the order of 10 gigabits per second or maybe even 40 gigabits per second on twisted pair cabling, in that case, we might have shielded twisted pair. And when I say shielded, you might see this in a couple of different forms. You might see foil used. Oftentimes, each pair of wires will have foil wrapped around them. And then you might also see braiding, much like we see in the coaxial cable that surrounds all eight conductors in this twisted pair cable. Oh, and one other variant of twisted pair I want you to know about is plenum rated twisted pair cabling. Think about when you're running cable in maybe a data center where you're running cable underneath the raised floor, or you have a drop ceiling in an office and you're throwing cable across the ceiling, above the drop ceiling. Well, are those areas used for the HVAC system, for the cold air return? If so, you don't want to put regular cable in those areas being used for the air return. Those areas are called plenum areas if they're being used by the HVAC system. And the reason I say you don't want to use regular cabling is when regular insulation on cabling is exposed to extreme heat, if there were a fire in the data center, it can start to release toxic fumes. You don't want toxic fumes being pumped through your building in the HVAC system. So you wanna use instead plenum rated cable, which has insulation that will not release toxic fumes in the event of extreme heat. Now let's consider some different types of twisted pair cabling. And these are called different categories of twisted pair cable. PBX systems, private branch exchanges, phone systems within companies, they commonly used category three. And in the early days of networking, I remember that we would use existing PBX category three wiring to connect devices to the network. And we did that at 10 megabits per second. You could use all four pair in the wire and that would give you 100 megabits per second. That was called 100 base T4. That was rarely used though. Normally we would use just two of the four pairs to get 10 base T and the distance limitation was 100 meters. And when fast ethernet came around and lots of people wanted to do 100 megabits per second, category three was not gonna do a great job of that. So instead we started installing category five or cat five cable. This would do 100 base TX, 100 megabits per second, which uses just two of the four pairs. Specifically, it uses pins one, two, three, and six of the eight different pins in a connector. And category five can also do 1000 base T using all eight wires. That's one gigabit per second. Now category five E doesn't get us any more speed or distance, but it does have better electrical characteristics and it's a recommendation over using a category five. But both of these have distance limitations of 100 meters and they can be used for 100 base TX or 1000 base T communication. When we go up to category six, not only can we do 1000 base T, one gigabit per second, but we can also do something called 5G base T, that's five gigabits per second, or even 10G base T, that's 10 gigabits per second. Be aware though that with category six, if you're doing a 10G base T, you're limited to 55 meters as opposed to 100 meters. 
You can overcome that 55 meter limitation though by going from category 6 to category 6A. This will give you the same speeds, but even 10G base T can go 100 meters. Category 7 can support 5G base T, 10G base T, or you might want to use that cable to support POTS, plain old telephone service, CATV, community antenna television, in other words, cable TV and your phone system, plus gig ethernet. So you can have voice, video, and data all running side by side on your category seven cable with a distance limitation of 100 meters. And in a data center environment where the cable lengths are typically shorter runs, you might run into category eight. It can do 25 G base T or even 40 G base T, 40 gigabits per second. However, the distance limitation is going to be in the range of about 30 to 36 meters. Again, this is intended for data center use, not building infrastructure cabling because of that distance limitation. 